All right. Okay. You ready? Okay. So let's talk about this torque here. Okay. So torque is the rotational analog of force that causes your rotation to begin or change directions or stop. Okay. So it's it's analogous to force. That's the thing here. So everything you know about force, we're gonna twist. So let's start doing our torque conversation. <laughs> so we have torque. Well, let's start with force. What is force? Now, what is it? If I say apply a force to this object, what do you do? Push, push or a pull. It's a push or a pull. Push or pull. If that's the case, then torque twist or twist. is a twist. Yeah. So he's basically right here. When we say push or pull, you can push an object or you can pull it, right? Well, you can't really twist and untwist. You can twist or you can twist the other direction. So if you screw it in this way, you can unscrew it the opposite. Twist and twist. All right. So torque is a twist. Okay. Now the biggest confusion about torque is it's similar to force, but not the same. Okay. Torque is actually caused by a force. All right. So <coughs> let's take a look here. So I'm going to give you all an example. Can you see the door? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to give you all an example of torque. So here is my demo door, which I had installed just for this purpose. Um, if we're looking at this door here, and I wish to open it. Now I know y'all probably were never properly taught how to open a door. Uh, you probably learned it on the street, because if you didn't learn it, you'd still be out there. Um, so, I'm looking at this door here. <laughs> now, in order to apply a torque, you need a couple of things. We know that we're going to need a distance, and we're going to need a force, okay? Now, everyone wants to jump in here, but remember, it's R cross F, so we've got to start with this guy. So, in order to find R, rotation occurs around a point. So, in order to measure R, we measure it from that point that it's going to rotate around to where I'm going to apply my force, okay? So, what point on this door am I going to rotate around? The door. No. I'm going to rotate it around this point? The hinges. The hi oh, hinges is a pretty good place to rotate a door. Okay? So my R, my <laughs> radial distance R, is measured from this point out, okay, to wherever I apply my force. So I can apply my force here, here, up there, but notice it's radial distance, not distance like this, right? Straight up from the radius, okay? So what point should I apply force? The handle. You'll say here? Uh, what, do you want to apply the least amount of force or the most amount of force? Okay, well, I just want the door to open. Put me out there. Literally yeah. anywhere. So, I can apply it anywhere, but most of y'all have said I should pull here. Okay, so my R distance would be from here to there. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. So that's pretty simple. That's my R distance. So, if I apply my force here, what direction do I apply my force? I can either push or pull. Negative. I can pull. Pull is probably going to be easier than push. I've ever seen someone be successful on a push. It's a challenge. <laughs> so, I'm going to pull this. All right. Now, to find the torque, I would do this distance times my force times the angle between them. And angle is important. What angle should I apply it at? Should I apply it at zero degrees here? Should I pull like this? Oh, 90. 90. 90. Oh, 90, like this? Yeah. Okay. It turns out if you apply it at 90, you get the maximum torque. Okay. Because here's the thing. In order to open this door, it requires a certain torque, not a certain force. Right? Like X amount of torque will open this door. Okay? And I can choose however I want to apply this torque, but it's only one certain torque will open this door. If I pull it like this, is this going to be helpful? No. Now, how many of y'all come over here and try to open the door this way? Can you do it? Can I open the door for me? Yes. 
Sure. From there, yeah. Well, what's different you're about opening the door? The, the angle's different. Did I change R? No. no. So what happens to my force when I pull from here? It's less than this. It gets harder. Oh, your okay. force is... You have to apply more force. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because my angle is not nicely aligned. All right, so if you wish to open the door, you apply your force far from the hinge and perpendicular to the door. Is everybody okay with that? Now, how many of you have ever seen a door where the handle wasn't there, that was in the middle? Have you all seen a door like that? No. Yes. No. They do exist. Yes. They're the right. Hobbit, sure. But in real life, yeah. where did you see the door? Like a little mansion. Yeah. A little mansion. That's <laughs> it's actually the only place I've seen them eat. Back in the day, I used to deliver pizza. I know it was awesome. But one of the things they don't tell you about delivering pizza is you get the experience of seeing a whole bunch of different doors. Okay. So my door experience is a lot higher than y'all. So what the doors you will see? Yes. You should advertise that like on the dominoes. Oh, look at all the doors you can see. You know? Big doors, small doors, heavy doors. Okay. Now the thing is, is I delivered in many, many places, but one of the places I delivered to uh, was South Lake. And for those of you who know about South Lake, they have a lot of money. And they like to show that they have a lot of money. And I don't really understand this, but I do know that they have some doors with the door handles in the middle. Not all, some. But I do know that this is pretty uniform, that in a higher, richer area, they can afford better houses, as you would imagine, and come along with it, come along better doors. So how can I have a better door than this? How can I make this door better? Obviously, put the handle in the middle of Make it huge. Automatically, make a really heavy, you. fancy wood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I want it to be a big, heavy door. <laughs> I want a big, heavy door, right? <laughs> if it's got a lot of mass, it's a really solid door. Nobody's going to break it down in the middle of the night, right? So, focus. So, if you have a big, heavy door, at some point, you're going to have to open your own door. Right. No. <laughs> Amazon drones. Actually, no, actually they probably know the project's always going through the garage. But no. sometimes you have to open the doors. So it still needs to be open, so you don't want it to be too heavy. But you can make it seem heavier if you put the door handle in the middle. Does that make sense? Like you have somebody come over, like, oh, just come on in. <laughs> if you've ever tried to open one of, did you have to open that door? Yeah. Was it difficult? Yes. Were you carrying anything while you did it? No, thank goodness. I used two hands to open it. Yes, and so typically it takes two hands because it requires a lot of force because you don't have as much distance here. All right. That's stupid. So it's important to know that with torque, it requires a certain torque to open any door. But you can use the distance and the force. All right. And if you don't have distance, you have to use more force. Or if you don't have enough force, you can make up for it with distance. Okay. So in the case of my example up here, or let's just focus on this door here. Okay. So if I use my right hand rule, what direction is the torque in? My fingers go what direction? The positive. They go this way, right? Oh yeah. What direction does my palm go in? What direction is the force? Out. Y out. So what direction is my down? Down. Y. Yeah. So it's in this direction, right? What? That makes sense. Uh, sorry, no, it's it out. My negative y. So if I'm looking down on the top of the door, it's spinning what? About around. Oh the yeah. Y. It's spinning clockwise, which would be negative. Yeah. That makes sense. So Wait, negative what? y, which is what we have. Everybody kind of understand that about the direction? No. So a tau is a vector, right? Yes. Uh, and the direction of it is what it's spinning around. Yeah. Okay. So it spins like that. Okay, I get it. All right. It'll take some time. I know it's a little weird. You just said it was going counterclockwise when you twist the door knob. No. no, the door goes counterclockwise. So the door goes counterclockwise, but your torque goes counterclockwise. Oh, yeah, yeah. So your torque goes. Sorry. So if this is the door goes clockwise. So yeah, the door goes clockwise. And so if this door up, it's going like this. Seeing from below, it's completely different. What you're seeing it like this, like we are seeing it. Well, it has to go either up or down. So in this case, we would say it's going down. There's a door. Okay. All right, so here, I have another question over here. It says, how do you change the tire? 
Okay. Well, most of us have seen a, a tire on a car before, if not changed one. So if you've got a tire on a car, we put a tire up here. So I've got a tire. How are tires and wheels attached to cars? Axles. Before the axles. Uh, yeah, you got to have the lug nuts, right? So you've got, I don't know, four, five, six lug nuts, whatever. Attaching the wheel to the axle. You all with me? So if you get a flat tire, how do you change that tire? Step one. Hang on. Hang on. Focus. Step one is you have to loosen the lug nuts. Because if you jack it up first, what's going to happen? If I put my little lug wrench on here, and I go to push on it, what's going to happen if this thing's in the air? It's going to spin the wheel. Okay. And so I'm telling you this right now, but I guarantee some of you, you're going to get a flat tire and you're going to jack it up first and then try to do this. You learn the hard way. Um, but note, you have this lug wrench here. Now here's the thing. For those of you who have never looked on the back of your car or truck, they're required by law to have a spare tire and a way of putting that spare tire on. Now, most people don't ever use these tires. And so, uh, as a cost-saving measure, they didn't put a real tire back there, did they? No. What did they put? Like a bike tire, basically. Put a donut. So it's called, it's called a donut. And if you look at this donut, it has a little label on it that says, do not drive more than 50 miles per hour, because it might explode. <laughs> it doesn't say because it might explode, it just says don't. All right. So if you go more than the speed it says, you're, you're literally taking your life in your own hands. Now, if you're, you've got a flat tire on the side of the road, you've got not an actual wheel, but something that will work. Do they give you a nice jack to jack the car up with? No, they give you kind of a mediocre, typically it's a scissor jack, and they're terrible, okay? Do you know why scissor jacks are terrible? Because it'll mess up the If you've ever used them, they have a tiny base. Why does that matter? Because that's more pressure. Well, if you think about your car, if this is your car here, and you're going to jack up just one corner. You all see that? So your base of support for the car was all four tires. But that's three tires in this jack. And it causes, if this jack wasn't here, what would happen to your car? It would rotate this way, right? It would rotate forward. So if you have three, you're jacking one up like this. Typically, you don't just get one, you get two. But if you move one up, if you remove the jack, it wants to rotate this way, right? Well, the thing is, is that jack has such a tiny little base of support, sometimes it will go ahead and rotate with the jack there anyways. It will cause it to fall off the jack. So they're dangerous. I'm being 100% serious. So the best thing to do when you change your tire is get this thing out first and stick it underneath the car. Because if the car falls, it won't fall on you, it will fall on this instead. Okay. So then, they not only do they give you a crappy substandard jack, they also give you a crappy substandard uh, tire iron to do this with. All right. And so next class, we're going to see how crappy everything is. But I want y'all to imagine here. So now you got to undo this. Is this a huge distance here? No. No. So what do you have to use to make a lot of force? A lot of force. And I've seen, especially. You females try to change a tire. I've seen them stand on these things and jump up and down and it not turn. So when I say you need a lot of force, you need a lot. Okay? And I've seen males try to turn this and not be able to turn it either. Because in, in reality, do you want these things tight or loose? Tight. You want them tight. You don't want your wheel coming off while you're driving. So you want these things on tight, but this doesn't give you much lever. All right? It doesn't give you much distance. Okay? So, next class we're going to focus on this, but right now I'm going to leave y'all with a story. Once upon a time, when I was in high school, my friend had a 66 Fastback Mustang. Now, I didn't go to school in 1966. I didn't go to high school. I went to high school in the 90s. So, as a result, the car was old. Okay. It was nice, but it was old. And it being old, it needed parts replaced on it. 
this particular day, we were replacing the suspension. Okay? For those of you who don't remember what the suspension is, it's shocks and springs. All right? The shocks are easy to replace, but the springs take a bit more work. So we went in to replace the springs, and we had all of our appropriate tools and everything ready to go. Okay? All we had to do is undo two more bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. Well, since this car was from 1966, there was a lot of rust on the bottom side of this car. And rust is kind of a problem. You know why it's a problem? Because it's bad. It weakens your metal. And the thing is, is if you use too much force, what will happen? It will break. It will break. Okay? So we're trying to get this bolt off, and if you break the bolt, literally you can snap it in half. The bolt will still be in there, you just have no way of getting at it now. And that's a whole other problem that I didn't want to deal with, neither did my friend. So we put the socket on there, we put the socket wrench on, and we went to push it, and it didn't twist. We didn't have enough torque. So we got the longest torque, the longest uh, wrench that he had, it was about two feet, it was about that long, from here to there. We stuck it on there, and I pushed it, he pushed it, it wasn't moving. So we did something a little stupid. And my friend is a little bit shorter than me, but he's larger. <laughs> well, I held it because he weighed more than I did. I held it, and he actually stood on the end of the wrench and jumped up and down on it. And this is what it did. Nothing. It didn't twist. So we were kind of at an impasse. I mean, we had air tools, but again, we were worried about using too much force because we didn't want to break it. just jumped on it. <laughs> like I said, it was stupid. It didn't break, okay? So then we were like, okay, well, what do we do now? We were afraid to use the air tools, because we were almost certain that was going to break it. But we didn't have anything else to do, so we went and called his father. And his father was a mechanic, and this is how he taught us how to do automotive work. He said, you do this, you do this, you do this, and then you'll be done. And then he went inside. <laughs> so we were out there doing steps A, B, and C, and we got kind of stuck on step B. So we debated what to do, and we didn't know what to do, so he went inside to get his dad, and his dad had fallen asleep. Because, you know, that's what old people do, they just nap all the time, right? <laughs> so he comes out, he's kind of mad that we've woken him up, and he looks at it, and he kind of fiddles with it. And... No, we were just throwing away, we double checked that, believe me, that was something we checked over and over, are we going wrong, are you sure? Is it not moving? Okay. So then his dad comes out and he kind of fills with it and he looks at his son and he says, John, go get the cheater bar. And John's like, oh. And he walked, obviously my friend knows what this is. I had not seen this thing before. So what it is, is our, is our wrench was already about this long. So my friend comes back in with a pole. It's about six feet long. And we take it and we place it right here. And we place the cheater bar over the end of it. Now, I want six feet, so that, I know that's not six feet from here, but in the end I want it about six feet long for the whole thing. And so we stick it on there, and here's the thing, I already mentioned my friend was a little bit shorter than me, it stuck up in the air like this high. Neither him nor his dad could reach the end. So guess who got to do it? It's me. So I go over to the bar, and it's just stuck right down there on the bolt. And I'm like, y'all ready? So they're holding it. His dad's holding it down there. My friend's holding it right here in the middle. And I'm like, okay, you ready? I push it like this. Did I use a lot of force to turn it? No. I didn't use a lot of force. What I needed was more torque. And that's why my friend felt stupid because he knew they had a cheater bar. And the cheater bar, it's called cheater bar, because am I using more force? No. No, so most manly men are like, well, you're cheating. Using that math. Right? <laughs> We're extending that bar out further. So I don't have to use as much force. And just I just remember clear as day, just pushed down on it, just came loose. And his dad said some not nice things to us and went back and sucks. So next class we're gonna take a look closer at tires and stuff like this and different torques. Alright?